Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have here a peculiar lander for Mars and I'm here to test it. These are custom made parts that I'm working on. And basically the idea is that we have a heat shield that's 8.4 meters in diameter. That's the same as the Space Launch System from NASA. And so hopefully it would fit on there or perhaps some other launch vehicle and we have a habitat that fits on top of said heat shield but also a ascent vehicle uh, with this pod here uh, so the pod is here and then the fuel tank is in the middle there and it's only partly filled right now and the heat shield has a trap door with the engines poking out at the bottom uh, these are particular engines that I have introduced before. They are methane, hydrogen, oxygen engines, so tri-propellant. And that's to give them a little bit more efficiency while still having some density to the fuel because otherwise the fuel tank would be rather large if it was just hydrogen and oxygen or the engines wouldn't be as efficient if it was just methane and oxygen. So it's sort of a happy medium. It's tough to get anything in between methane and oxygen or hydrogen and oxygen otherwise, uh, unless you do a tri-propellant thing. Like if you want about 400 seconds of ISP to 420, either you have a really bad hydrogen-oxygen engine or that's it. So uh, this was the way for me to get that kind of mix uh, and we'll see how well it does. Uh, Anything that was would be more hydrogen and oxygen-ish would be a bigger fuel tank. So that's how it is. Also, we have uh, landing legs that in one case would serve as a descent ramp for the Kerbals. So people could walk down one of them. Uh, the others would not be walkable because that would entail too much airlock volume in the HAB. Uh, the HAB does have a small ISRU unit built in and we have drills here. And we also have a nuclear reactor that is not currently active. That's this door here. Uh, don't worry, we will extend it out well away from the hab. Uh, otherwise, it does have a fuel cell as well to using the hydrogen and oxygen if we need to do that. And it's got solar panels up by the pod. The pod itself would just use the solar panels. So that's the setup. And I need to land it somewhere with ore so that we can replenish its fuel and uh, in this uh, for some reason I only have these resources I don't know why but that's our ore patch and so we're gonna try and land somewhere around here and hopefully there'll be enough ore for us to drill for I already uh, tried once that's that lander there but I'm gonna go through it again for the purposes of the video and I'm hoping that it doesn't end up too different from the one that's already landed because that one worked well enough for me to start recording, basically. So, uh, that hopefully will be about right. And right now it's all opened up, but of course we're going to close it up when it comes time to enter the atmosphere of Mars. We do have a descent mode on the HAB that I'm going to use to do somewhat of a lifting entry, but we don't have a full lifting entry. Obviously, this is not Starship or something like that. Well, still a bit wiggly. Smart ASS does not like stabilizing around here for some reason. I've been going with about 42 kilometers. I just cheated this into orbit incidentally, so. But we are underfueled to sort of simulate the fuel situation that we would have. So, closing up, retract, do not jettison. So, all closed up there now. Let me turn off the overlay. And air brakes out. I probably should have bigger air brakes than this. And I've been going to the overextended 100 degrees, even though the strut doesn't actually connect like that. 
in order to get a little bit more. But yeah, I think I have my own air brakes somewhere where, where I could have them be bigger and maybe fit a little bit better too. So these are okay. Still, we're going to need to use the engines a little bit in order to slow down so the parachutes can deploy. Okay, turning descent mode on now. Since we are firmly suborbital, and I'll just control it myself. It doesn't deflect too much. But any little bit of lift will help so that we slow down more ahead of time. The habitat portion is about 12 tons. Just for reference. We don't have much ablator on the heat shield because we don't need it. Mars is more about having surface area, not so much about the heat because we're not coming in that fast. And that's a thin atmosphere. But we are certainly heavy on this heat shield. And we'll see how that goes. Right about here, I'm opening the doors, arming the parachutes. Okay, ignition. We need to be below 2,000 meters per second for the parachutes. Now, of course, I have a pair of drogue chutes and a pair of main chutes. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's see, well, let me turn on the overlay again. Yeah, well, we're in the patch that is okay. Not landing at Valus Marineris or anything, which would be easier. And it does seem to have ore in it, but we're landing over here this time. Okay, and because the landing thrust will sort of be aimed wrong if I don't turn it off, I'm gonna turn descent mode off. Don't know how practically speaking they would do that exactly. Perhaps move water from one end to another. Uh, we do have basically refrigerators for the food, water, and oxygen. They are the right size. The, uh, the food, water, and oxygen you see up there are sort of in these containers. So they could, there we go. So they could, if we add some spare space, move water from one end to another or something. Okay, that's just the drogue shoots out. That's the main shoot pre-deployment. Okay, ignition. Don't start going up though. Okay, alright, we have landed. Probably the best landing I've done with this so far. Okay, so we're tracking those air brakes. And let's extend out the nuclear reactor and then start it. We wouldn't have started the reactor or anything. Deploy. And so it floats out there. I wanted a cord uh, as well, a wire. Uh, but I ultimately decided that animating that would be too much of a pain. It also sort of floats above the ground. I'll have to move it down. Anyway, it's a 60 kilowatt reactor. So it's a little bit more than the kilowatt power one that they have or that they're working on right now. And activate generator. So now it's generating. Okay. And 
Weapons, deploy drill, deploy drill. Okay, now I have changed the efficiency of them at the temperature where I want them to operate. So they're a little bit more efficient than normal. They'll go, well, I don't know. Now they're at 100% efficiency. Um, well, okay, let's see. I think maybe when I start the ISRU unit, they go down because of the heat from the ISRU unit. Well, okay, that's changed from what I had before. Okay, fine. Anyway, as long as we get the stuff, it's fine. It's important that we get a full load of hydrogen, oxygen, and methane in the time that we have with the food, water, and oxygen, which is uh, 46 days. That's the other one that I already tested. So I'll try to, maybe I'll even cut down the replenishment speed, depending on how it goes here. The oxygen is the easiest because when you have water molecules or CO2 in the atmosphere, you get a lot of O's. <laughs> the methane and hydrogen is toughest because the H's are very small. <laughs> it's the way of looking at it, I suppose. Okay. We've got a reactor, so we don't have to worry about nighttime or anything. And we're not using the fuel cell. Oh, well, the methane stopped, though. Oh, it was just a time warp glitch. Even when that happens. Okay, I'll keep to this time warp. Otherwise, it won't keep track of it right. Now, I've yet to actually test the ascent vehicle all the way to orbit. So that's going to be the new thing here. Oh, that's a little bit too quick that we've replenished everything. I'll have to cut that down a little bit. It does depend where we land, like in a more efficient spot or less efficient spot. It's tough. Hydrogen, of course, is the last to finish replenishing because it boils off and everything. We do have boil off. I do have MLI layers, but we do have boil off. Okay, we're coming up on daylight. That'll be good. We're just about replenished. And there's the sun. Okay. So, now. We don't really need to retract the surface harvesters. I'll just leave them be. Okay, well... Is this going to be especially dangerous? Okay, a little bit of throttle. Oh, I can't use that throttle. And go. Off it goes. Now, I do need to make sort of an umbilical kind of thing. Well, something to go from this hatch into the hab. Right now, I don't have that. And also, I haven't made the door to go from inside the hab to out of it. Oh, gosh, we were going really fast up. But yeah, the parachutes were on the hab part. So of course, the heat shield was. So It's all free. I don't know. Uh, probably it would torch the hab. I don't know how bad off the hab would be after this lifted off from it. But it's only a short stay hab. It's like a 40 day hab kind of thing. We left most of the supplies in there. There's only 10 days worth right now. Just a procedural tank and it's the basic aluminum gridded tank. Nothing fancy. I should have dumped the wastewater, waste, and probably the carbon dioxide too. We're clearly not using kerbalism in here. Uh, but yeah, well, we've got a little bit of extra mass, presumably to simulate some samples or something. Well, the tri propellant thing is a little bit of a hassle, but it's probably better than using pentaborane or something. Oh, incidentally, I forgot to mention. 
uh, these engines top off at uh, 100 kilonewtons and they throttle down to about 25. And ideally what would happen is the throttling would be by cutting the methane and so technically they would get better efficiency when I throttle down. I'm not simulating that right now. You can see the efficiency is 383, so not actually in the 400 range right now. I guess that's what I calculated out to be. They're not as high chamber pressure as the bigger ones that I used on the Perspective H4 launcher. So just 383, that's all I'm asking for. It's not crazy, right? Normally for just methane oxygen for a lander engine like this, I'd probably use uh, 360. Just a little bit of hydrogen. We needed to carry the hydrogen anyway for the fuel cell. So this just helps. Okay, that's enough. All right, we are in orbit. We've got a little bit of extra for rendezvous. Um, had to add these thrusters, this, these lower RCS ports, in order to make rendezvous possible. Otherwise, we only have the top three. But, yep, yeah. and we'll have nice big solar panels that will provide enough for this pod anyway. And that is the idea. But it does take some tweaking of the numbers for the drills. I, I, I didn't. I mean, of course, the hab itself has the ISRU built in, but basically, they're the same numbers that you get with the RO configuration on the ISRU unit, the stock ISRU units. Uh, it's just a matter of changing the drills so that it's a little bit more efficient. Uh, is what I had to do. Um, especially make sure that they get the best efficiency at the temperature that it seemed like it was at 500 which is what we normally drill at uh, that's the core temp goal on the drills by default so I don't know maybe I didn't even have to do it and but it had weird effects with the other lander that I had been testing with the other one that still landed down below so yeah I decided I had to change them but maybe I didn't actually and it was just some weird happen happening but there you have it. That's the lander. I don't have any particular name for it right now. I call it the heat shield lander because the heat shield had the most complicated animation involved. <laughs> uh, so that's what I called it. But well, that's until I decided I needed a nuclear reactor and then the hab portion needed that popping out. I still have to figure out how to animate wires in an easier way. That would be nice. But for now, we are here over Ballas Marineris, and I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.